Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are enjoying learning with language and linguistics. Let's talk about pragmatics and move to our first slide. In this lecture, we are going to talk about presupposition and entailment, types of presuppositions, and philosophical background of speech and theory. Presupposition is speaker's assumption and anticipation about the listeners prior to making an utterance. Speakers have presupposition, not the sentence. For example, how do you lose your weight? Listeners has weight and speaker knows this. Your newspaper articles are amazing. Here, speaker knows listener is a writer. In contrast, entailment is something that logically follows from what is asserted in the utterance. Logical consequence is termed as entailment. Sentences have entailment, not the speaker. Relationship between two sentences where the truth or felicity of sentence number one requires that sentence number two must also be true or false. For example, Trump is responsible to take all decisions about the USA security as the president. Trump is the president of the USA. Supposition are the common ground between the speaker and the listener. Lexical items and linguistic constructions that engendered presupposition called presupposition triggers. In types of presuppositions, the first one is potential presupposition. Speaker uses large number of words, phrases, and structure to express him or herself by keeping in view the context is termed as potential presupposition. For example, the PM of Pakistan is bald. This sentence has two presuppositions. First one is there is someone who is the Prime Minister of Pakistan and the second one is the Prime Minister is bald. Type of presupposition is existential or possessive presupposition. This presupposition shows in possessive construction and more generally in any definite known phrase. For example, your book, your house, yours, mine, your house is beautiful is example of possessive construction and pre possessive presupposition. The king of France, the cat, the girl, the girl I saw in the valley was beautiful is a sort of definite known phrase and the example of possessive presupposition. Effective presupposition is the third type of presupposition. Effective presupposition describes facts why certain verbs like knows, realize, regret, aware, glad. For example, everybody knows John is jobless and poor. John is poor and jobless. That is fact. So it's effective presupposition. The sun sets in the west. That is again a factual information. I regret telling you that you could not get this job. Here, I tell you or I am telling you that is fact. So, that is effective presupposition. Philosophical background of speech act theory. Speech act theory is usually attributed to the Oxford philosopher G.L. Austin. He formed basic ideas in the late 1930s in his lecture delivered at Oxford University. Central tenet of speech act theory is that the uttering of sentence is, are, is part of an action within the framework of social institutions and conventions. Or saying is part of doing and words are part of deeds. Logical positivism in the late 1930s at in influential school of thought in philosophy was logical positivism that was developed by a group of philosophers and mathematicians principally in Vienna. Central doctrine of logical positivism was known as descriptive fallacy, namely the view that the only philosophically interesting function of language is that of making true or false statement. A particular version of the descriptive fallacy is the so-called verificationist thesis of meaning, namely the idea that unless a sentence can at least in principle be verified or tested for its truth or fallacity, it was strictly speaking meaningless. 
For example, shouting at children is wrong is neither true or false, rather simple subjective statement and against the principle of logical positivism because we cannot get any idea whether it's true or false and it depends entirely on the context. Shouting at children is wrong is neither true or false but subjective statement is also against this philosophical background that Austin set about developing his theory of speech act and made two important observations. First one, he noted that some ordinary language sentences are not implied to make a statement and as such they cannot be said to be true or false. Secondly, Austin observed that there are ordinary language declarative sentences that resist our truth condition analysis in a similar fashion. The point of uttering such sentences is not just to say things but also actively to do things. In other words, such utterances have both descriptive and effective aspects. Accordingly, Austin called them performative and he distinguished them from assertion or statement making utterances which he called constatives. Performatives are utterances that are used to do things or perform acts. In contrast, constative utterances are implied to make assertion or statement. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe language in linguistics.